Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR Heat 5 Next Gen Career Mode Mod Series here on the channel. Hope you're all having a great day today. We're headed to Gateway, but I got exciting news before we head to the track. The NASCAR Heat 5 2023 Next Gen mod is officially out to the public. It is in beta, just like the mod I'm playing, the 2022 mod, but the 2023 beta is now out to the public. Link down in the description below to the website. You'll click on the website. On the homepage, you'll literally see 2023 uh, files, I think it is. You want to click that and download that. I am working on a tutorial on how to to properly install and go further with putting your own paint schemes in the game, changing driver pictures, how to change paint schemes in the files, etc. So I will have a tutorial video uh, to come out on that soon. But I can tell you uh, for the base files in that mod that you are going to download, it is quite simple on your Steam folder. You want to just simply paste the files that you download uh, and overwrite the files in the game that's already there in your Steam folder. So wherever your install location is it's pretty straightforward uh, but yeah I will be making a whole tutorial video within the coming week or two hopefully uh, to kind of walk you guys through that and then dive even deeper and I'll also supply you guys maybe some templates too so you can make your own paint schemes here but you can see practice went okay uh, I was pretty happy with the pace in the car every lap got slower though every single lap one two three but here we are in qualifying with this brisk Toyota uh, and excited to get on this track gateway is a, a thinking opportunity okay, for us to have here. a decent night but I could be wrong I really don't know the car is really really tight on the short run in gateway as you can see myself really struggling to get this car to turn you heard the tires squealing under braking there going into turn one now down this back straightaway of course towards turn three uh, a completely different turn three compared to turn one and two a lot more I don't know how to describe it wider you can kind of tell what I'm trying to say off the track map uh, but you can see through three out of turn four down this front straightaway with a goal of a 33.441 I think we're gonna beat that it's gonna be close it's a 33.284 so we do beat it here in Illinois at 300 we will start P18 in gateway so an okay starting position. I was pretty happy with that. My teammate Bubba Wallace in 24th. Uh, usually when he qualifies rough, he races really well. Elliot down there in 26th. Terrible qualifying effort for the Hendrick Motorsports driver uh, as we take a look at the rest of the grid briefly as well. Rounding out the top 10. Kyle Larson, which he's going to be one of the stories of the race is his struggles that they're highlighting. Logano, Suarez, the front row with Kurt Busch, Chastain, and Truex rounding out the top 5. Now before we go green, we also have some weekend updates on Truck Series and Xfinity series races Colby Howard won the truck series they were in Charlotte this weekend so a surprise winner there and we also had a surprise winner in the Xfinity series as well Mason Massey a name I haven't heard in a long time goes to victory lane over Justin Allgaier Ty Gibbs continues to run consistent but can't quite seem to pick up the victories here now as they were also uh, in Charlotte this past weekend now as we're going to focus in now on the cup series let's send it over uh, to Mike Joy Clint Boyer and as well Chris Myers Hello race fans and welcome to St. Louis. The NASCAR Cup Series is set to tackle this racetrack for the first time ever. Our story of the day is Kyle Larson, the defending cup champion, has yet to visit Victory Lane in this new season and is currently on the bubble for the playoffs. Mike, Clint, is this a cause for concern for the five team? It for sure is, Chris. We saw that team get off to a solid start, but they have struggled a ton over the last few months. They don't look like that same team that won 10 races in a title just one season ago. I agree, Mike, but I'm not hitting that um, that panic button just yet. That old Larson boy is pretty good when he gets hot, and you know for sure it's going to happen at some point. with 2022 being the inaugural event for the Cup Series. It looks like these drivers and teams are ready to fire them up. Let's go racing. Hold that thought. We just got word of a lightning strike within eight miles of the track. We will go on a 30 minute hold. Well, you heard that there. We had a lightning strike and a 30 minute hold, but it didn't take long for the rain to start to roll in. So uh, yeah, we had a little bit of rain for a few hours, which now was pushing this towards a night race here in Gateway. So it uh, should be an interesting one, but the track would get dried eventually after the rain moved out and we were ready eventually to go racing here from Gateway. I have 
absolutely no idea what you just said. You're not coming through at all. I think we need to switch the channel too. Well, we already have some radio interference. We have no contact to start the race with our team as they are not coming through. Uh, so we'll see if that gets sorted out throughout the race. Harrison Burton failed optical scanning station multiple times. Starts at the back of the grid along with two other drivers, including Kozlowski, who had an engine change after qualifying, and Eric Almarola, who failed technical inspection. We are ready to go racing here. Now the rain has moved out. You still see some cloud cover in the background, but it's all moving uh, in the Come direction the that we need it to be moving, not towards the track, but does it look beautiful what here? Done, now as we are racing yeah, from top. Gateway, now we've had trucks, we've had Xfinity here in the past, actually. Have we had Xfinity at Gateway? I'm not 100% sure, but we've definitely had trucks for many years at this track, and now here we are, Cup Series racing from Gateway here in St. Louis up the inside of Eric Jones on this opening lap. Joey Logano, Daniel Suarez, that was your front row uh, to kick off this race. Now, stage one, extremely short here in NASCAR Heat 5 and Gateway. It is only a 10-lap stage to kick this race off. Stage two, uh, quite a bit longer, and stage three, quite a bit longer, of course, as well uh, as that will be the longest stage of the race. So, yeah, you see it there in the top left. Only 10 laps up the inside of Busher. We got past him, but it wasn't long until Blaney up my inside here. Two-time winner this season, Ryan Blaney is. Not the most wins because William Byron, the most recent winner in the Cup Series last episode in the Coke 600 picked up his third win of the season. Of course, the last episode, a big one. Uh, you know, we had an okay night. It was whatever. Uh, but we had the news as well of Andretti coming into NASCAR full-time next season. It's going to be just a one-car team, but they will be full-time next season. And they are also set to run five races this season uh, as a little bit of a warm-up practice uh, to kind of get into the swing of things going into next season. Now, it's not going to be five back-to-back -back races. There will be a couple of uh, consecutive races, but for the most part, it'll be a little bit more spread out here uh, for that team. But they won't be making any starts until the final half of this season, and most of it coming in just the, the final quarter. Basically, you'll see the majority of their starts, probably three of them, uh, or even four of them, come in the playoffs here. Now, I got passed right there by the 23 of Bubba Wallace. Uh, he qualified 24th, but he's All moving right, his way well. forward here now, as I am uh, struggling for yeah, track position. Now, you see this group of cars right here that's being kind of slowed up. So, there was one specific car that was slowing up everybody. That was the number eight of Austin Hill, who's still uh, replacing the injured Tyler Reddick with that concussion. I do have an update on Tyler Reddick's status. He is going to likely be back in the car within the next two to three races. So he will still have a chance to make the playoffs here because with NASCAR 8 5, it's impossible to take points away. So Hill has still been scoring points for the eight car, uh, but it's still likely that the eight car uh, will need to go to victory lane with Reddick behind the wheel to make the playoffs here. Now, as you can see myself, uh, continuing to fight with these drivers passing Kevin Harvick we got back past our teammate of Bubba Wallace in the 23 but he had a lot of speed and he got back up my inside now coming to just only two laps to go on the stage Joey Logano looking for yet another stage win on the season he has been doing great when it comes to stage victories now but Bubba uh, on the final lap gets clear down into turn one so I'm going to settle in behind him only running P18 but look at how far everybody's driving away three wide in front of us but it's the eight of Austin Hill just holding back Careful. everybody, including now Kyle Larson, as well as Chase Elliott. Elliott, another driver that qualified Careful. horrendously, Careful. but has moved his way forward, but he hasn't been able to pass the 8 of Austin Hill. Larson's Careful. going nowhere. We talked about it in the pre-show. What's going on with Kyle Larson? He just hasn't had the speed so far this season with this new next-gen car. We're side-by-side -side to the line, but 10th place driver. crosses the line. It's going to be P17. We actually scored ahead of the 14 of Chase Briscoe. Briscoe, a driver uh, in the playoffs right now. He's had a, a decent consistency consistent season hasn't been you know showing winning speed but Logano uh they're winning the stage we're going to come into the pits as well as make some adjustments okay you should be able to hear me now unfortunately that is correct haha -ha, real funny we're going to make a few adjustments here to help your long run pace well, there you hear it. So we got contact again with our crew chief now switching to channel two seems to do the trick. P17 as we're going to be ready to go green right behind now? Bubba Wallace. And then number 23, we're back underway here. As you can see, the McDonald's Toyota Camry get off to a decent uh, get-go right there alongside the 34 of Michael McDowell. Actually, a bit of a checkup down as we head towards turn one. Uh, but you can Careful. see up there, maybe some three wide. William Byron in that Raptor machine trying to move forward. Three wide right in front of us. Kyle Larson compromised a bit in the middle. That eight car of Austin Hill 
I don't want to be behind him because he's just slow as molasses, but it is pretty difficult to pass here uh, in Gateway, and, and that was why the 8 car was able to stay ahead of everybody, even though he was struggling on pace. I lunged one of the inside of Larson uh, as well as that 34 of Michael McDowell. We're going to be side by side on the exit of four down this front stretch. Logano leads the lap after winning that first and opening stage. He's been dominating so far uh, here in Gateway, and if you remember back to real life 2022, Logano did go to victory lane in that uh, 22 car, so 3-1 in the middle here. The 14 on the inside, 34 on the outside now as we drag race down this back straightaway. Look behind us. That number 15 of Ryan Priest having a great run for Rick Ware Racing. Had a solid run last episode in Charlotte and here he is again having a good run uh, for Rick Ware. So he's making a good case for himself to get a good ride next season, that's for sure, as we head towards that 2023 season now. Uh, as you can see myself again, three wide. I dove up the inside of Briscoe, kind of giving him a bit of a taste of his own medicine right there. So we get past him uh, as well as Michael McDowell. Austin Hill right in front of us. I am not dealing with riding behind him like Larson and Elliott did. I said, get out of my way, Austin. I'm going to drive right into the bank of him into turn one. Send him for a slide. Maybe a little bit egregious now. Kyle Busch bulldozes in there as well. Somehow we all come out of it. Bush sideways. He saves it. So that turned into way more than it really needed to. But we continue on in B14. And Austin Hill has lost a few positions. Smoke up ahead is Daniel Suarez, who's crashed hard into the outside wall. And no caution. He was running P2 at the end of stage one. A great day going for Suarez. That hurts me as a Suarez fan. But where's the caution? No caution came out. We're headed down the front straight away. He's still limping back around because he was already past the pit lane. Look at this. Everyone diving all over the place. There's Suarez right in the racing line. I'm going to cut through the grass and pass 200 cards to 48 to 24. Where the is the officiating going tonight? What is this? I really don't know what it is at this point now. We somehow don't get a caution. Suarez would make his way to the pits, and that would be get the end of the night for him as well. Now. His car would be too damaged to continue. Alex Bowman up my inside here a few moments later. He's going to get back that position I took from him, and William Byron uh, wasn't far behind. I was struggling uh, to compete against these guys here and that Raptor machine oh, such a line, beautiful paint scheme once again I might add uh, is going to be up my inside going for that overtake in through uh, turn one and two 21 laps here in stage two obviously uh, a lot longer more than double the length of stage one by an, a lap uh, but you can see that Michael McDowell inside, lap inside. 10 runs me down what would be the final lap in stage one he's going to go through and we're going to drop down to 14th place so struggling a little bit here uh, with my pace uh, you know about halfway through this second stage and just trying to stay with it here we have a nice gap over 15th place that just got eliminated uh, because the caution is going to fly. Logano, Bell, Blaney, Chastain, AJ Allmendinger having a really good run there, rounding out the top five. Kyle Larson's down to P, what, 18, I think it said, as it looks like maybe Busher or Grala, one of those two, uh, brought out the caution here as we're going to get ready to go back green. No pit stops aside from the obvious there of Busher and Grala. Uh, we're P14 on the outside. Can confirm, by the way, that Andretti car, whenever they do start, will replace that 50 car. Uh, as we're going to get back underway here from Gateway less than 10 laps to go in Stage 2. I didn't want to see the caution because I was pretty happy with where we were uh, and just had a nice gap over 15th place. So now we're going to have to fight a lot harder uh, to get a decent result here in Stage number 2. Logano clear on the exit of 2. Ryan Blaney has driven his way all the way up there. He got past me earlier in what Stage 1. We know that 12's got speed uh, and he is showcasing it again. He's looking for his third win of the season here as we're nearly into the back of the 24. How about the 51 of Ryan Priest? I said 15 earlier. Sorry, 51. Uh, but Ryan Priest is moving his way forward in that car as I clip the outside wall on the exit of turn four. Todd Gilliland up my inside, but we would start to fade backwards here. Kyle Larson's going through Kyle Busch as well. So down in 19th place. I look behind me. It's Austin Hill. I said, oh no, I am not dealing with you right now. So I make sure I get in line and just settle in here in these closing laps in stage two. Down to 19th place. A little bit disappointed as you could probably imagine uh, with the pace in this car and we would stay P19 right to the final lap of stage two down the back straight away trying to close in on the back of the 24 Raptor machine but it's just not going to be enough unless I decide to get really aggressive and do this right here we're going to lunge it up the inside through three and four trying to compromise them on the exit Logano sweeps the first two stages over his teammate of Ryan Blaney this time and we really run that 24 out of room to the line P18 is what we get thank goodness 10th place cross the line Byron I think had some momentum to come back out of Brad Kozlowski uh, got up into 20th place, passing Austin Hill late in the stage there. Everybody's going to come to the pits for four tires, fill it up with fuel. I didn't really need 
uh, much adjustments here, but we did go up a tiny bit on the wedge. You can see the top 10 there. Bubba Wallace getting the final stage point. Almendinger still running P5. McDowell up to P7 somehow, having a great run here in gateways. You see the rest of the order currently. Harvick having a rough night uh, in the mid-20s right now, but we did lose one spot in the pits to the 24 of Byron. So we're going to get back underway here uh, from P19. So I was kind of happy we lost that spot because now here we are on the inside. There's 23 laps of race to go here in stage number three. Fellow rookie of the year contender right in front of me, Todd Gilliland now as we come through one and two. Kurt Busch, he's had a bit of an off night. Kurt Busch qualified in the top three. A great qualifying effort from that Monster Energy Ford Mustang, but we just haven't seen the race pace out of Kurt Busch and he has been very hit or miss with this RFK team, which RFK has been hit or miss in general. We've seen Kozlowski have really good days, really bad days. We've seen Busch have really good days and really bad days. We've seen Kurt Busch have really good days but not bad days, but mediocre days. He's certainly run the best of the three drivers, uh, but unfortunately, stay it's low, just not been enough. He hasn't been able to go to victory lane yet, and I would love to see, not Kurt Busch, but just RFK in general go to victory lane, but especially oh, Kurt. Okay. I would love to see Kurt get a victory here uh, with that 60 car. Ross, the boss, Chastain, was able to get the lead on stay the low, stage three uh, opening, so he is now out in front with 21 really laps to that. go. He's looking for his second win of the season and, well, overall second career win here now. How about Ryan Priest again? I can't stress enough how good he's doing in this Rick Ware car. Up to 15th place in this race now as we're side by side. Contact with the 14 of Briscoe. That made me have to back out of it on the exit of turn four, so that destroys my momentum. Brings Kurt Busch back to my rear bumper with 19 to go down into turn one. He tries to look up the inside. He might make it happen. No, I shut the door and stay in P17 as I'm desperately trying to fight and hold on here with these guys. 15 to go, and we're starting to slowly reel in that 38, but a big moment there in turn one. I drove in so deep, uh, I decided to try and downshift and just see if I could get the car to rotate. It didn't work. It uh, shot me sideways, and Kurt Busch capitalized hard after contact with myself. So now down to P18, but look at this. Out of turn two, my car is starting to slip and slide a lot. The car was starting to just get really light on the exit of turn two. I was getting looser and looser lap after lap here. 12 laps to go. Another position lost. We just don't have it here in stage three. I think the adjustments were honestly the wrong way here now as we come to lap 50. Chastain still out in front. Logano uh, got to be very frustrated right now as we exit turn two and there it goes. The car is going to go for a slide and a spin on the exit of the corner. That's going to bring out the caution. They'll throw a caution for that but they won't throw a caution for what happened to Suarez earlier. Uh, but yeah, the car was just all over the place. I don't know what to say. I mean, it just sucks on the long run. It got so bad. Now, we are going to have a short run. We're going to pit for four tires, and I would actually put the wedge way down because it's really tight the on green, the right? short run, so it's oh, the opposite of the long right one. The long one, it got too loose. You saw it. So, uh, we're going to have, what, seven laps to go. We're down to P39. We were 21st, I think, when the caution waved, so if we can match that, uh, I would not be too disappointed. If we can beat that, even better. Three wide in front of us. Now, fresh tires do mean a lot here in Gateway, so there is still potential that we could get a heck of a finish out of this, especially best case scenario, we gain a 10 to 15 positions, caution comes out, and then we stack them all back up and we have another chance to gain even more track position that way as well. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens here now, but look at this, after just a lap, we're up to 32nd place now all over the back of the 17 of Busher. We would send it up the inside right here across the line, three wide again, a lot of three wide moves. Uh, Gateway is a really good track to set up three wide moves here. Just, it's just, the door is always seeming to be open. How about this? Austin Hill dropping Hello. now down towards just about outside of the top 30. Austin Cindric having a rough God, night. Three wide up the inside. We just keep picking him up. Now passing the three of Dylan, going up the inside of the 44 and the four uh, of Biffle and Harvick. Harvick having a rough night, but we're up to P21 already with the four fresh tires. Here we go at the inside of the 38 of Todd Gilliland. Right now, give me a call. There it is. The words are uh, taken out of my mouth. The caution flies. Chastain in command over Bell, Almendinger, Blaney, and McDowell. Logano was dropped all the way down to P6, and even better for us, we're restarting on the inside, so not only can we send it three wide up the inside into turn one, but we can do it every other corner for the rest of this all race, right. because we're going into NASCAR overtime, two all laps ready. to go in Gateway, under the lights, the NASCAR Cup Series debut at this racetrack here, and Stay Chastain is in command as we head down towards turn one for what could be the final two laps of the race. The door is open, Haley doesn't even try to close it. Here we go up the inside, unannounced, didn't even knock. Here we go, following that 14 of Briscoe on the exit of two, side by side with 
Kozlowski as well as William Byron. And all of a sudden, I believe we might even have pace to go for a top 10 here on Gateway. What a rebound that would be after spinning about 10 laps ago. As now up the inside of the 14, the 18 of Kyle Busch. Kurt Busch right in front of us. Chastain well clear and in command. White flag is in the air. Where did the speed from the one car come in this final stage? You have to wonder. Here we are three wide with Kurt Busch and Alex Bowman as we head down into turn one. AJ Allmendinger into second place. And I think he's going to bring McDowell with them past Bell into third as we exit two. There's a uh, 12th place and 11th of Elliott and Larson. 10th place of Bubba Wallace. As we head down this back straightaway for the final time, we're going to lunge it up the inside three wide with Larson and Elliott. We're going to get them both here through the center of three. We're not going to get a top 10, but it's going to be P11 as we exit turn four. Ross Chastain is going to win in gateway over AJ Allmendinger. We cross the stripe for 11th place. What a result there. Ross Chastain picks up his second career victory in the NASCAR Cup Series, and it's making Trackhouse look very smart signing him on, uh, as, of course, uh, the, just the numbers continue to go higher and higher for that one team. But honestly, P11 felt like a win for me uh, because we were uh, struggling so hard. Obviously, the caution, myself spin, uh, ended up, you know, benefiting us here. So can't really complain too much. Now that does wrap it up. We're going to check out the point standings. Zane Smith at the top of the board with five wins in trucks as they head to Gateway in the next one. He has five wins. The next driver closest to him has won. Gregson, Allgaier, Hemrick at the top of the board in the playoff standings in Xfinity on only two drivers after Mason Massey's win are in on points. Almendinger uh, and Ty Gibbs, who's sixth overall in the standings, and he's the last one in the playoffs. There you see Chastain, now the fourth multi-time winner this season. We, after that rebound of 11th, are only four points out of the playoffs. Bubba Wallace is one point out behind Almarola. Suarez out by nine after that unfortunate event there, uh, and Austin Dillon and Jones, 30 and 34 points out with Bowman, Sindrick, Allmendinger, Kozowski, Chris Buescher, all with a little bit more work to do. We're going to take off and in the next one, head to the road course in Sonoma, out to California. I'm excited and I'll see you guys then. Have a great day, everybody.